This is ABC 7 News at 6. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Beth Jones. First tonight, an evening UTV ride left one man dead and another injured. It happened in the town of Westfield a little after 1030 Sunday night. According to the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife, the UTV was driven by 40 year old Jason Wilmot from Portland. His passenger was identified as 44 year old Chris Foster from Gorham. Officials say they were traveling down a small hill when they came to a slight turn in the road along with a low spot. When the UTV went through, Wilmot was not able to negotiate the turn and hit an embankment, then a tree. Both occupants were ejected from the UTV and Wilmot was pinned under the vehicle. He passed away at the scene. Foster sustained head injuries and was transported to A.R. Gould Hospital in Presque Isle. The department says an initial investigation suggests alcohol may be a factor in that crash. Bangor police arrested two men on Saturday after receiving a report of a possible burglary along Hammond Street. According to a press release from Bangor Public Safety, uh, Bangor Public Information Officer Sergeant Jason McCambly, officers who arrived on scene located a van with two individuals in it. Police say after speaking with them, a handgun was spotted in the passenger area of the van and a search of the vehicle turned up a large amount of illegal drugs. That according to police. Now, 53-year-old Don Doobie of Newburgh and 36 year old Scott Lord of Bangor were arrested and transported to the Penobscot County Jail. Lord is currently charged with possession of a firearm by a prohibited person and aggravated trafficking of scheduled drugs. He was also charged with violating conditions of release. Doobie is facing one count of aggravated trafficking of scheduled drugs. The Maine Department of Health and Human Services is the state's largest department and is charged with providing a number of different services, two of which include child protective services and supervising adult guardianship programs. Well, after several deaths from both programs, in part one of our series from Care to Crisis, Corey Bouchard takes a look at that issue. Over the past three years, there have been eight incapacitated adults in the state's care who have died from unknown circumstances. And now state lawmakers want answers. I, I don't think that there's any emergency in this year that rises to the level of this one. Well, I, I mean, I think um, anytime, you know, someone passes away in state, uh, you know, care, uh, that's really um, worrisome. Senate President Troy Jackson and Senate Republican leader Trey Stewart may be on different sides of the political aisle, but one issue that seems to be unifying across party lines is ensuring the proper care of children and adults under state supervision. Since 2018, the number of child deaths in the state have consistently been in the double digits, with the last two reported years of 2021 and 2022 being 31 and 29 respectively. Many of those children had some prior contact with the Department of Health and Human Services. For a while, the spotlight has been on children in Maine, as it should be. Any child death is too many. Uh, but we have seen a pattern of behavior now as it relates to not just uh, child deaths, child abuse, and now uh, adults with guardianship uh, uh, situations. Due to a slip up with how the Maine Attorney General's Office handled a request for information by media outlet the Maine Monitor, we have learned about eight adults from across the state who were under public guardianship that died between 2020 and 2023. The adults all died from what the Maine Office of the Chief Medical Examiner described as undetermined. The most common cause of death was allegedly over medication. According to Senate President Jackson, they were not made aware of the deaths, despite there being a law requiring the department to report to lawmakers about deaths of adults under guardianship. Finding out why we, we didn't get those reports, didn't, you know, we didn't know. Uh, I mean, my gosh, one of them, I think, was in Fort Kent uh, until, I, you know, read about it in the paper. At the State House, I'm Cora Bouchard for ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. Already, well, in other news tonight, Maine Senator Angus King is urging the Biden administration to take action on energy costs before we get too far into the winter heating season. In a letter to the White House Office of Management and Budget and the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Senator King said, quote, amid energy, amid increased energy prices resulting from Russia's war in Ukraine and inflationary pressures, 
LIHEAP has become even more important for helping families pay their energy bills without foregoing other essentials. Unfortunately, supplemental funding is needed once again as we head into another winter heating season. Winter heating prices are expected to remain roughly as high as last year, and LIHEAP applications are up significantly. According to the National Energy Assistance Directors Association, states are reporting increases of up to 20 percent in the number of LIHEAP applications since last year. With limited funding, states will face tough choices about the amount of assistance they can provide and the number of people they can serve. And quote. Now, nationally, it is estimated that some 6 million households receive assistance from LIHEAP, and that includes over 45,000 households right here in Maine. Well, on Saturday, dozens of people from several parts of the state rallied on the steps of the Pierce Memorial in downtown Bangor, calling for solidarity with the people of Palestine. Our Grace Blanchard spoke with the protest organizer and his mission to seek justice for the Palestinians caught in the middle of that war. There can be no peace without justice, so I'm calling for justice above all. Over the weekend, Mainers from all across the state gathered right here in Bangor in a demonstration to end the violence between Israel and Palestine. It is very, very clear now they are going for full-on ethnic cleansing of the Gaza Strip, and I could not remain silent. And I Bangor resident Brendan Davidson organized the protest with other community members in the wake of the violence that started with Hamas's invasion of Israel and the murder of scores of innocent Israelis and some Americans. What we've seen outright with uh, the leaders of the Israeli government is they're straight up denying that Palestinian civilians even exist. Palestine is composed of the West Bank and Gaza Strip. Davidson says the conflict has resulted in the death and displacement of many Palestinians who did not ask for this violence, but have landed in the crosshairs. Think about what it would be like to have been expelled from your home, to have been living in exile for 75 years, to live under siege, under blockade, live under segregation and dispossession. Think about that situation. Think about their humanity. That's what it comes down to. Davidson says his hope is to give a voice to the people in Palestine whose messages of peace, he says, have been lost amongst the chaos. In the siege of Gaza, drop, stop the bombing, stop the killing. We stand with the Palestinian people that we, uh, we feel for their suffering, and we want to see a day when they are free, when they can live in peace, and when they can live in justice. In Bangor, Grace Blanchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. After almost 15 years serving Hudson University, President and CEO Robert Clark formally announced today that he will be retiring in December of 2024. Beginning on New Year's Day of 2010, Clark's tenure saw improvements in Hudson's academics, finances and expanded enrollment helping establish several academic infrastructures, including the schools of science and humanities, business, and more. He also oversaw the integration of the New England School of Communications into the university. How could we strengthen the experiential learning that those students were going to receive was part of the priorities coming into the institution. Well, according to Clark, one of the things he holds as, as a proud accomplishment during his time in College Circle are the 10,000 plus students who received their Husson University diplomas. So certainly a lengthy tenure there. Congratulations on that retirement announcement. Alrighty, folks, let's go ahead and peek outside and get a first check of our forecast. All right, Beth, thank you. Happy Monday. What a weekend for today. Some rain showers out there that are going to linger through tonight into tomorrow as well as a little system to the west of us is going to kind of rotate through and that's going to bring us those rain showers tonight and through much of tomorrow. So it won't be an all night rain or an all day rain tomorrow, but we're going to get wet with those scattered showers out there once again. The bigger picture here shows the bulk of the rain right there moving this way. So expect the heaviest rainfall after midnight tonight. All right, temperatures today. Cloud cooled and rain cooled, right? Highs only in the mid 50s, which is kind of where we're supposed to be this time of the year. Our forecast then tonight, though, is cloudy skies and rainy skies out there tonight. Low temperatures down near 50. Your full forecast is coming up. Beth? Alrighty, Jeff, thanks so much. Well, coming up on ABC 7 News at 6, our Doug Banks takes us to a boxing gym in Ellsworth where Parkinson's patients keep fit and build community. And an Aussie Shepherd in Camden comes off as more of a hardly working dog, but nonetheless, the local fire department says she's a valuable member of their team. Our Jody Hersey brings us that story coming up. Hey, what's up with the big smile? 
It feels so good to help someone secure better Medicare coverage and lower their costs too. It's the best part of being here at Senior Planning Center. And most people don't know about all the options available with today's Medicare health plans. And many can save money by qualifying for the Medicare Savings Program. We're here to help you get, get all, all the, the benefits, benefits you're entitled to. With agents and locations across Maine, call today. No obligation to enroll. To keep the doors open as long as we have, the customers always come first. And that's why we're against question three. Question three costs $13.5 billion. That's billion with a B, which could mean higher taxes for all Mainers. It turns our power grid over to the politicians, the same politicians that take money from the oil and gas companies. They put themselves first, not us. Question three is a risk Mainers cannot afford. The roar of our engines, the pump of our heartbeats, the sparks that unite us to the passions that drive us. We're driven by the things we love. From the visions that lead us, the feelings that inspire us, to the roads that bring us together. Coastal Auto Parts, 29 locations in Maine, will get you to the moments that matter most. With the largest network of parts and care to keep you firing on all cylinders. Coastal Auto Parts is owned and operated by a Maine family that cares. I got hurt by a big truck. Why did I call the twos? Because life-changing injuries deserve life-changing money, and I'll fight to get it for you. We got a client who broke multiple bones in a commercial vehicle accident, $700,000. Another client had a brain injury, and we got them $1.15 million. If you get hurt by a big truck, call the twos. We win for you. Hurt by a big truck? Call the twos. We win for you. Some things are worth waiting for. Something reliable, something loyal, something long-lasting. A six-year warranty? Coyote's got that. One machine for all the dirty work? Count on Coyote. Coyote won't break your heart, and Whittemore and Sons got the deals that won't break the bank. So quit swiping and settling for less. Slide into Whittemore and Sons and be treated like family. By a family who cares. 257 Waterville Road, Skowhegan. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Welcome back. On October 4th, we brought you a story about a program that helps individuals with Parkinson's disease through boxing style exercises. Well, our Doug Banks took to the ring and spoke with the boxers themselves. I'm here today because of this group. Meet Jack Kunkel, Byron Vinton, and Harvard Austin. Three boxers at Rock City Boxing, Bold Coast, Maine. Diagnosed in 2018, Harvard started here two years ago. It took me a while to get into the program because I, I felt I didn't need it. But now, he's never going to throw in the towel. And now I come Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. It means that much to me, you know, for the life that I'm going through right now. This program helps boxers well beyond the physical exercises. Everyone in that room has Parkinson's, and I bet you'll never find two people that have the same symptoms. Sometimes it's the things we can't see. I have this hallucination where I'm, I have smoke coming out of my nose and my, my mouth, and the, nobody else can see it but me. And I, I can feel it right now. I can see it. In the not that distant future, uh, past rather, I had um, serious thoughts of ending my own life. And one of the reasons I didn't was this group. Everybody had a life before their diagnosis. And every day they're here, it's a reminder that they are alive and they will never fight alone. I got grandkids now, so that's, that's helping me drive myself a little bit more. The camaraderie and seeing the, seeing the people and get to know everybody, and that's the best part about it for me. It made me realize that maybe there was some reason to hang around for a while longer. In Ellsworth, Doug Banks, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. And our hats to all of those who are fighting. 
Alrighty, well, if you're looking for an excuse to take the family out to governors, you can do it tonight and support a good cause at the same time. Until 8 p.m. tonight, the Old Town governors will be donating 10% of all sales to Old Town's Caring Community Cupboard in honor of World Food Day. Vice President of the Cupboard, Beth Adams, says fundraisers like this one are crucial to providing support for impoverished communities. Um, most food pantries are run only on donations. Most pantries don't get subsidies from the states. There are a few organizations that give us discounted items, but nobody gives us stuff for free um, as far as the government's concerned. So everything we get comes from our local community. Well, if you can't make it out tonight but would still like to help the cupboard, you can donate through the cupboard's Facebook page, and a link to that can be found on our website, foxbangor.com. Well, UCP of Maine's 21st annual Pumpkins in the Park fundraiser is officially less than a week away. It will be taking place at the Anna Shrine Building next Sunday from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. So mark your calendars. Organizers tell us it will feature hundreds of glowing jack-o'-lanterns and family fun activities, including trick-or-treating, face painting, and prizes, of course. All proceeds will help support children and adults with physical, mental, mental health, and intellectual needs in the community. This year's theme is Hooked on Books. Sponsors are encouraged to decorate their booths based on a book of their choice. UCP of Maine's Marketing and Community Relations Manager Andrew Lohman says he's excited for the fundraiser to kick off. Through COVID, we had to do it digitally, and last year we were, we were glad to be back in person, and uh, this year we're back stronger than ever. The event costs five bucks per person or $15 for the entire family. Well, Dalmatians have always been seen as the unofficial mascot of firefighters, according to the American Kennel Club. However, an Aussie shepherd named Hazel didn't get that memo. And as our Jody Hersey tells us, this dog has decided it's her duty to assist the Camden Fire Department. Hazel is not your typical fire dog. She likes to nap, especially in the mornings, and she enjoys her fair share of peanuts, which is not a great resume for a working dog. But despite those characteristics, she's proving to be a valuable member of the Camden Fire Department. I brought her a few times to see how we go, and uh, she kind of fit right in and just now expects to come every day. When this two-and-a-half-year-old Australian shepherd is not snoozing on the job, her owner, Camden Fire Chief Chris Farley, says she's socializing. She visits the town office. She goes over to the police department. She runs up and down the hallway in the police department. And, uh, you know, so she's just a, just a very social dog that wants to, to see and meet people. And then there was that one time where they came upon a car accident near Camden Hills State Park. Two young uh, children in the car. Nobody was seriously hurt, and they were sitting on the grass off to the side just, just crying. So my wife happened to be with me because we were at the park. So um, she went over and brought the dog to them and just calmed the, the kids right down. Fellow fireman Matt Heath says Hazel is a joy to be around. Yep. No, it is nice having her around. She helps keep everything nice and mellow. As stressful as the firefighting profession can be, Chief Farley hopes Hazel can be a source of calm and comfort to those she encounters. You know, she... Runs up to everybody and greets her during her after calls when she's been in here and we, we go back out into the apparatus bay. She just kind of goes out there with that, that bundle of happy energy and, and spreads it around. In Camden, I'm Jody Hersey for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Never underestimate the healing power of a dog. All righty, well, still to come on ABC7 News at 6, the Patriots are, all, are out to their, to their worst start since 1995. How getting down early led to their loss to the Raiders. That story coming up. With harsh main winters and winding main roads, collisions can happen. But what can you do to make your vehicle look like new again? Just go to Main Collision Center in Bangor. New owners Sean and Kim Sullivan and their exceptional technicians and team members provide a certified full-service repair facility for auto collision repairs, even fixes for scratches and dents. And Main Collision Center works directly with insurance companies to promptly process your claim. If you're going to get it fixed, get it fixed right at Main Collision Center. With AAA insurance, by bundling our home and auto policies, we saved over $450. And we were shocked at the savings. 
When we switched to AAA auto insurance and bundled our policies, we were able to save over $400 every year. Switch to AAA insurance today, and you could save an average of $483 on auto insurance. Compare that to State Farm, GEICO, even Allstate. Call now for your free AAA full picture quote to find out how much you could save. Well, my passion is hang gliding. I've been doing it for over 30 years, and it's like flying. I mean, it's like everything you always dreamed about. AAA insurance helps us save more. And do more. The savings from AAA insurance has allowed me to pursue my passion of making jewelry. It's great to have a little bit of extra cash to do something that you love. To find out how much you could save by switching to AAA Insurance, call 866-460-1310 for your free AAA full picture quote today. You'll be glad you did. Hanks Husqvarna is your full-line Husqvarna dealer with two convenient locations, 32 Old State Road in Carmel and 19 Moosehead Trail in Newport. Whether it's tractors and zero turns, chainsaws to trimmers, or pressure washers to battery power. Everything is set up, serviced, and ready to go by our certified Husqvarna technician. And all sales are backed by our in-house Husqvarna warranty. For parts, service, or sales, stop in to Hank's Husqvarna, Carmel, or Newport. Mesothelioma is more than a ravaging illness. It is a disease that can ruin a family's finances and is never the victim's fault. The law offices of Joe Bornstein has been fighting and winning for Maine families for nearly 50 years, and we've collected over $500 million for injured Mainers. If you or a loved one is a victim of mesothelioma or asbestos-related lung cancer, call Joe today for a free case evaluation and to learn about your family's legal rights. Dial 207-CALL-JOE or online at joebornstein.com. Tonight's sports is brought to you by Healing Hands Massage in Hamden, providing professional massage services tailored specifically for their clients. Stop by Healing Hands Massage today. You'll thank yourself later. Hey, everybody. Ryan Sudall here. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, another Monday, another Patriots lost their third straight. They got closer than previous weeks, though, at least, falling to the Raiders 21-17. The Patriots are now 1-5 for the first time since 1995. Quarterback Mac Jones getting sacked in the end zone late in regulation, which sealed the deal for Las Vegas. The Patriots had some positive moments in the game, but once again, when it mattered most, just couldn't make that one or two plays that would have made the difference. The one common thread in all five Patriots losses this season, they fell behind early and could never quite catch up. It's been hard to play uh, from behind. That's not the way you want to play um, in this league or really in any any competitive sport that I could think of. Um, and we got to do a better job of that. There's no doubt about it. We just have to do a better job. When we get our opportunities early in the game, we just haven't made the most of them. And we got to we have to do a better job of that. So it's coaching, playing, it's all the above. Okay, now to some happier news. Maine football have won two out of three now after picking up a huge homecoming win on Saturday against LIU. The Black Bears were down 10-7 at the break, but came out in the third with a 14-play, 85-yard scoring drive, and they kept the lead from there. Derek Robertson had another strong outing with 235 yards and three touchdowns, and the defense certainly did their job down the stretch. All in all, head coach Jordan Stevens believes it was the best that the entire team has looked all year. It didn't start out the way we wanted to in the first uh, first two series of the game, um, but I thought we responded well and continued to play, and that's been a point of emphasis is up, up for us is just responding, um, staying within process throughout the entire game and doing a better job in those second and, and third quarters. Uh, I thought it was our most complete game as a team. There's a lot of areas we be better, but uh, always good to get a win on homecoming. Now the Black Bears get back on the conference train and prep to face Campbell University down in North Carolina on Saturday. The first time the Black Bears have ever faced the Camels. They're averaging 37 points a game so far, so it'll be difficult for the Black Hole, but Coach Stevens says as long as they approach it correctly, the results will come. They're an explosive offense. Uh, you know, I think they can find a way in the run and the pass game. It's a huge challenge this week going down there. Um, you know, they're a team that's really built for uh, built to go down the stretch here you know, in the late October into November. Um, so uh, a lot of respect for what they've done this year. And, you know, we'll, uh, we'll approach this week the right way and uh, with the right focus. Okay, that's all the time we have for sports. I'm Ryan Sudall. Here's Jeff Weller with your full five-day forecast. 
Hey Ryan, happy Monday. Let's start here. Lots of clouds out there today and some rain showers across the region that will linger through tonight into tomorrow. Probably not ending until early parts of Wednesday morning. And the bulk of the heavy rain is going to arrive for us tonight. In fact, here it is now over here moving this way. So expect some rain showers across the region tonight into tomorrow. Probably into tomorrow night too. With that locally heavier rainfall likely after midnight tonight. So we've turned the faucet back on. It's not going to be a really, really, really heavy rainfall, but a few areas could see a quarter to a half inch of rain from this that will likely linger into tomorrow night. All right, future cast shows lots of clouds around tonight with showers in here as well uh, that are going to linger overnight tonight through tomorrow into tomorrow night. So it's not going to be a burst of heavy rain, but it's going to be kind of stretched out over a period of time that will give us maybe a quarter inch of rainfall heading into Wednesday morning uh, after cloud cover rain showers through much of tomorrow. And then we're likely going to not kick the clouds out of here time soon. Like here's Wednesday morning. Lots of clouds around, still a couple sprinkles, followed by more clouds throughout the day Wednesday into early parts of Thursday as well. This is not going to be a really heavy rainmaker. So uh, if you want a lot of rainfall, it's not going to happen with this system. But just know the persistent showers out there tonight, off and on throughout the day tomorrow, and then into early parts of Wednesday morning. The wind today out of the north around five miles per hour. This will actually go calm for a few hours tonight and throughout the day tomorrow, which means that's going to give us some dense fog once again. And that fog is going to be really, really, really slow to lift tomorrow and throughout the day tomorrow. It could be mostly foggy across our areas. Be careful driving if you're out and about tomorrow into the afternoon. Okay, going forward though, temperature wise today, 56 here in Bangor, also Millinocket, 51 for Greenville. So, you know, temperature is doing what they're supposed to do in mid October around here for us today. And tomorrow, about the same temperature wise with highs back in the 50s to low 60s. Our forecast ends tonight, they're looking at scattered rain showers out there again nothing really heavy uh, but persistent rain likely after midnight tonight with low temperatures down near 45 and a northeast breeze around five for tomorrow all right here we go so morning showers followed by some afternoon sunshine tomorrow again it will not be an all-day rain we breaks in the clouds tomorrow for a bit with high temperatures back up in the mid 50s again and then looking ahead your five-day forecast shows the story so that rain chance tomorrow with a few breaks in the clouds tomorrow partly cloudy for wednesday although there could be a sprinkle especially early wednesday morning uh, for 59 degree temperature and then Thursday 64 that's gonna be a good day right 64 and then followed by some more light rain showers on Friday 62 there's the weekend right now the weekend looks wet and it could be really wet with a good chance for rainfall late Friday throughout Saturday into Sunday with temperatures near 60 over the weekend Beth Alrighty, Jeff thanks so much and there is still more to come folks stay with us to prepare you for winter, we're holding the Toyota All-Wheel Drive Savings Event with thousands of Toyotas to choose from. Right now, you can get 3.99% financing on an All-Wheel Drive RAV4. The event ends October 31st. Toyota, let's go places. From a gallon of gas to a gallon of milk, everything costs more these days. And question three will make things worse. It'll cost billions, and we'll be on the hook for it. It will increase our electric bills. In question three, it doesn't require an operations plan, not even for emergencies or power outages. Question three is too costly and too risky for my family. I'm voting no on three. It's a bad idea for Maine. Today's real estate market has changed dramatically. It's changed in both buying and selling. There are so many things to keep in mind. Higher interest rates, property insurance issues, and higher prices. That's why more than ever, it's important you choose an experienced team. That's us. We want to help you sell well and buy well. It's a professional experience from start to sold. If I don't hear from you tonight, try to Dot, dot, dot. Am I supposed to read the dot, dot, dot? It's another exciting year of high school football in the state of Maine. Get out and support your home team and be looking for the ABC7 Sports Blitz crew. You can get a free Sports Blitz t-shirt, then watch Sports Blitz during ABC7 News at 11 every Friday night during the football season. Blitz shirts courtesy of... 
Art Service Center, Color Concepts, Eddington Store, First National Bank, Main Collision Center, Top Notch Detailing, Twin City Nutrition, and Twin City Tile. This week, the Israel-Hamas war, the new attacks inside Gaza, plus the heightened security here at home. More Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television, World News Tonight with David Muir. Finally tonight, the Maine Association of Broadcasters Awards Gala was Saturday night, and for the first time, the Maine Association of Broadcasters named a television station of the year for excellence. We were the very first station honored with that award. It's definitely some great news for us here at ABC7 and Fox 22, and a big shout out to our entire team. We are certainly very grateful to have been recognized. Alrighty, folks, well, that is going to do it for us from everyone here at ABC7. Have a great rest of your night, and we'll see you right back here at 11. Good night, everybody.